In order to access the Bloomberg Market Concepts, you click on the blue screen, type in BMC, and it'll bring you up to Bloomberg Market Concepts. From there, you go to Course Modules to select to see which different modules you'll be doing, the duration of them, and what you will be learning. Altogether, the Bloomberg Market Concepts takes approximately eight hours to complete. If you're a new user, click on the Sign Up section, continue as learner, and fill in the relevant information, as well as signifying that you've read and agreed to the terms of service. Once you're done that, you can go into the login, input your login information, and from there it'll show you the current progress that you have for the BMC, when it expires, and the percentage of uh, correctness you have for their in-video quizzes. Click Access Course to start the BMC. Click on the terminal because you're utilizing the Bloomberg terminal currently. And from there, you can see that some of these sections are locked and they can be unlocked once you progress through each of the previous sections. So for the first one, you can click on Introduction and it will tell you what you'll be learning. Click on the Introduction button and that's how you begin this, the series. So as you can see here in the Security Description tab, when you click on it, it'll give you a basic overview of the current equity that you're looking for. In this case, it gives you a basic introduction of Intel, time series data of the current equity price, as well as any relevant ratios and data that you could be looking for. To look into something more in depth, you can click on one, any of these tabs. And what I'll do is I'll give you a breakdown of each specific thing that you're looking for. In this instance, the issuer info, it tells you how many people own the current shares, who are the top holders, as well as where it's being traded in and when the initial IPO was. In the ratios tab, you can see all the current relevant ratios that you would need to analyze a company. If you want to look at it from a graphical point of view, simply click on the graph looking icon on the top right. And what I'll do is it'll bring you to a new screen that will have the available graph. From here, you can click on quarterly to change the time any of the times that you want to display that. As well, there's a simple slider here where you can click to change the time. Over here on the right-hand side, what you can do is you can change the EBIT or, the, or any of the other assets to compare with the current ones in the chart. If you want to make sure that you can move this, make sure you save it, and then you can export it into Excel. Moving back here, you have the revenues and earnings per share. What you can do is you can click on the comparable revenue and click on this button over here and it'll give you future projections for the, all the revenues for Intel. Additionally, again, you can click on different on the source to change the source, the currency to change the currency as well. And this one is currently um, phased out, but what you can do with this data is by using the future revenue projections, you can use these numbers to calculate any uh, DCF models that you want to do for any relevant projects. Again, you can upload this to Excel to bring it up into Excel so you don't have to manually type in all these individual numbers. Finally, you have industry info. What, what this has is it has any relevant news that will affect any companies in the current industry, as well as industry trends, um, com industry benchmarks to compare it to, as well as how Intel in this specific instance is comparing to its competitors. If you want all this information from a very top-down level, what you can do is click on security description, click on report, and what it'll do is it'll generate an external report that will have all of the top-down information for you um, on a separate PDF file. Okay, so in order to look up time series data, what you first do is you go to the blue bar, you pick any arbitrary company, in this case we'll be looking at Intel Corporation, and as you can see here is the line chart and graph fundamental section. So simply click on line chart, it'll show you a very simple graph 
of the time series data of the Intel stock. On this indicator, you can see all the different time frames you can use if you want to look at a short term time frame or a long term time frame. As well, you can change the currency that you're looking at, as well as what specific um, variable you're looking for, such as last price, bid, and ask. Additionally, if you want to be more specific, you can change the dates over here. You can implement a moving average for any um, analysis you want to look at. As well, they have a new feature called key events. So if you click on the key events section, what it'll do is it will highlight several different parts of the graph and the time series of data, where it shows analysts different predictions as well as events that have happened that may have affected the stock. If you want to compare this equity with something else, simply click on the compare button. It'll bring you up to this prompt screen. And from here, you can compare it to whatever you wish. In this case, you can type in the S&P 500 as a benchmark, click update, and it'll show you the comparison so you can draw any correlation um, and any other conclusions you want with that type of data. Finally, you can click on actions to save it internally within the within Bloomberg, or you can export it either through using a PDF, SVG, or a JPEG. Additionally, if you want to edit any of the colors to make it look more presentable, you can use the add function over here to make sure that it can be um, altered in any way you want. Next, we have our security surveillance tab. What you can do here is you click on company events and it'll give you a comprehensive list of all the different events um, that pertains to the relevant company that you're searching. As you can see on the left-hand side, you can sort it based off the date range as well as the event type. So if you click earnings call, you will filter out only the earnings calls. And as well, as you can see on the right-hand side, there are different icons indicating what additional resources are available to you. In terms of calls, you have audio if it is available, as well as potential PowerPoint presentations as well that the company has used themselves for their own purposes. Finally, there's also a transcript in the event that the audio perhaps is not available so for a written uh, comparison of that. What you can do is you can export this into Excel and it will give you a comprehensive list in Excel of all the different dates, the tickers, as well as all the other relevant information that you need. Next, if you go on to the Bloomberg quote section, you'll see a fairly comprehensive tear sheet of the relevant company that you're currently looking at. For this instance, we're looking at Intel again. As you can see on the left-hand side, they have different indicators and different <clears throat> percentage changes. And for example, here the beta, as well as things such as the relative valuation, comparing the current company to its competitors. So for, in this case, Intel's competitor is Qualcomm. So you can compare these different averages. At any point, if you see any of these <clears throat> sections that you want to be more, to have more in-depth information, simply click on the title. For example, here you can click on earnings. And what it'll do is it'll bring you specifically to a more earnings-based screen. From here, you have more detailed information as well as estimates of the future years, the percentage changes, as well as the year-over-year -year growth. There's also charting if you want to use relevant graphs for, your, for any of your projects. And simply, again, just click on it. And from there, you can customize it and export it as necessary. As for additional features, what we can do with Bloomberg, one of the features that you can use is called business intelligence. So you type in BI into the search bar and what it brings up is a lot of different sectors and topics that has relevant news articles and industry trends that you may be looking for. So for example, if we look at the energy sector, it will give you different trends and research reports and news reports of what's currently happening in the industry. From there, you can be more specific. We'll go into coal, for example. And from there, I'll bring you to Dashboard Home. So this will be a really good place for you to look at if you're not too sure what's happening in the industry, who the big players are and what the key indicators are. As you can see on the right-hand side, there are the main competitors, their current um, percentage change year to date, 
as well as key indicators and benchmarks that they use for their specific industry. Over here, they have their industry primer, critical themes as to what may be driving in, this, in the industry, if you're looking for industry drivers, and more recent news. This will be good if you're doing any type of equity report and you need more insight on the industry that the equity resides in. Another feature that you can look at is the supply chain feature. So what you do first is you type in your um, equity name, type in equity, and then type in PSPLC, and it'll bring you to supply chain screen. So what this does is it shows you essentially where their suppliers are and who they're selling it to, what the revenue percentage of that is, and the, as well as the percentage of cost of goods sold. This will be good if you're using, if you're doing any type of individual company report and you're looking to see how the revenues are affected um, based off exposure from other companies that they're currently working with. If you feel that this is not the ideal way of showing it, you can click table to show it as a table instead of as a chart. Additionally, if you're looking to see at um, different companies within the supply chain, simply click on them and it'll bring up a new screen that has their supply chain as well. Again, you can change any of these functions to make sure that you have the most accurate data and relevant data for your research report. You can change the currency as well as change to the display name to make sure that it fits any of your relevant needs. Again, another relevant feature that you might be looking forward to is the WAC or Weighted Average Cost of Capital. So again, like before, you type in the ticker as well as the equity button if it is an equity or if, it, if it's not an equity, make sure you click the correct button such as uh, fixed income, bonds, options, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you type in the ticker name, the type of security it is, then you type in WAC and what it'll do is it'll bring up a very comprehensive detailed report of how the weight average cost of capital is broken down for that specific company. As you can see here, they already have the weight and the cost calculated for you. However, if you want to do more of a deep dive into it, you simply click on it and it'll give you the values that it used to calculate the exact WAC, um, the cost of equity, cost of debt, and if they do have it, the cost of preferred equity. This would be, again, good for any equity research report that you're looking for, or if you're looking for different types of debt structures, you can use this as an indicator. You also have the chart here as well which looks at the WAC as it changes at, through a period of time, which can no, note any type of economic changes or external changes that may force the company to either take on additional debt or reduce or increase their weighted average cost of capital. Finally, the last function that you could also use is the MA or mergers and acquisitions function. So what that does is it shows you a list of all the recent mergers and acquisitions that have happened throughout the world. As you can see here, there's a large detailed deal list of all the potential targeters, acquirers, what the status is of the current merger or acquisition, the value, and the payment type. If you want more information, simply click on each specific deal that you're looking for, and it'll give you a new screen that has much more extensive information, whether it's friendly or not, whether the type of structured deal that they're going to use. And on the left-hand side, they have different sections for who's involved, the timeline of the event, the actual deal, any arbitrage opportunities. And if you want, click the export button and it'll export to an external screen onto an Excel file where you can keep all the data information for your own relevant interests. You can also sort this data based off of geographical breakdown, industry breakdown, and current deal status. On these different tabs, it'll show you essentially different things that you might be looking for, including financial, financial multiples and statements, the different types of capital flow flowing out throughout the world to see if there's any trends in terms of any third world countries making more developments compared to first world countries. As well, they also have a deal list of, again, all the current deals, a buyer list of all the buyers, and a time series tab to help you with any relevant information that you may be looking for.